and, and how do you feel like it's going? You know, I think it's going great. Um, you know, I think it's in the end of the day, it's going to be a blessing in disguise because we're getting a lot of kids who I don't necessarily would have had a ton of reps. Now I'm going into to fall camp, and you got a group that has – you know, over a thousand reps going in there, ready to roll and ready to compete with the guys who come off the the injury board, and really makes those guys off the injury board come in ready to play, or they'll get passed up. So, you know, it can be frustrating at times, but that's what spring ball is for—to go out there and make mistakes, fly around. Um, I'm, I'm pleased with the guys understand what it takes to compete every day. Uh, the challenge that is as a wide out, they probably get coached the hardest of anybody out there, just because I was a wide out. So there's not much sympathy there. But they've really come a long ways. Coach Conway's done a great job just help pushing those guys. We put a lot on them. And then they got to be able to run for days with the tempo we expect and, and make all kind of plays and all different kind of combinations. And, you know, just been overall pleased with some of the young guys and some of the guys who probably not got as many reps in the past really stepping up and making plays for us. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a weapon. Obviously, I don't want to hurry up to mess up. Um, a lot of it depends on how we're running the ball and how our defense is playing. You know, you can go and get as many, many snaps as you want, but towards the end of the year, if your defense is getting up to 80, 85 snaps a game, you're just not going to have a chance to win uh, late in the year. So you have, to, you have to manage it. But, you know, I think it helps with practice, helps with just the energy, um, helps get our guys in shape and stay in shape. And when you're good at it and you're running the ball, it really puts the defense in a, in a major bind. You know, you're always playing at a two-minute pace. So when we get to that point in a game, they're pretty much – they're really comfortable with it. And it's nothing new uh, because it's every day. And I think as you do every day, you're using the ones you, you know, were able to execute a higher level. You've had ten, a bowl game and ten practices with Michael Pratt. What are your impressions of him and, and, what does he need, and where does he need to work the most? You know, he's done a great job. First and foremost, he's done a great job trans, uh, transforming his body in the weight room, um, putting good weight, good muscle on. Um, he's got a great personality. He has a great feel for the game, can make all the throws. He's just still a freshman, and people got to remember that. Uh, he has a new offense being thrown at him. A lot of similarities, but just a different style and tempo and pace and um, execution that I like. And, but he, he's done a great job. He stayed in there, uh, competes every day. If he has a bad day, he comes back the next day and, and makes up for it. Um, I think it's just the consistency of, and just speeding up his maturation, just like most freshmen to your program. And uh, I think he has a good grasp of what we're trying to do, and I think he's just going to keep getting better and better and better. Um, I think he's done a nice job of gluing the offense together during uh, these practices and keeping guys up and, and keep helping them push forward as well. Yeah, I wanted to go 100% down there. Um, you always got to accelerate your arm, just like in golf. If you short arm a putt right there, a two-footer, you're probably going to miss it. So just always accelerate through. It's a good lesson to learn right there in that situation instead of a uh, Saturday during the season. But, you know, it's little things like that. Just the, just one second of laps can, can change the difference on the goal line. We just can't have that. And uh, it's a great lesson. He'll learn from it, and he'll, he'll be better for it. You know, we, we still have a long ways to go. I don't ever like to project. Um, you know, guys got to stay healthy. There's talent there. Uh, we have to get in way better condition. Um, they got to keep getting stronger so we can get off press a little bit better. Uh, but it's a fun group, and it's a resilient group. Um, you know, and it's going to be it's gonna be fun when they have, you know, a little bit more legs to, to make it through practice. I think it's going to help a lot. But uh, it's, a, it's a group that's grown as well as a quarterback. So uh, I hope they're going to be good. But, you know, we got to see it every day, and they got to understand that. They got to bring it every day. And they have to, you know, continually, you know, accelerating their process of maturation as well. But it's a fun group to be around. And uh, I really think it's a blessing in disguise for us to have to play all these young guys and all the reps they're getting. It's only going to help them when they start fall camp and kind of give them an idea of how seriously they have to take the weight room and, and their conditioning because that's where the offense starts in the weight room. And I think the more they understand that, the better they're going to be. And you've coached tight ends a lot in the past. What do you, how do you feel about the group that you've 
I feel good. Coach Nagel's done an outstanding job with them. Um, he's a huge asset for me because there's so much we put on that group. And for him to be able to coach at the level he coaches at is taking a lot off my plate. I've uh, been really impressed with him and, and just his handle of the group. They, they understand it well. Obviously, they're young um, and they have to keep coming on. Same thing there. They have to keep getting stronger in that group too and, and mentally tougher and that'll come with getting in better shape because there's a lot that's – them and the quarterbacks probably had the most put on them in this offense so we can play at tempo. Um, they're so play specific. They have to know where to line up based off the play so I'm not wasting a lot of time getting a long um, call out there to the guys. Um, so, But they've done a nice job. You know, I think it just their conditioning catches up with them sometimes in practice and obviously the overload of info they have to be able to process. But I've been very impressed with Coach Nagel and what those guys have done. And Chris Watt was put in the unusual position of having to come in. <laughs> right. Spring it already started. He said he already had a relationship with you from coaching camps and stuff like that at Notre Dame. What, what is your – and Coach Fritz talks about how he wants his offensive line coach to have a pretty good rapport with the offensive line. Right. No, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to death to get Chris. You know, he comes from a great coaching tree from Harry Heastan, a guy I worked with at Notre Dame that I have a ton of respect for. Um, I know what we teach. He knows what we teach. He knows what, how I like it taught. And uh, he brings great youth and great energy. A guy who's played in the NFL, played in huge games for a national title, um, and just has a great feel and, um, you know, rapport with the players. And I think that's just as important as anything. He coaches them hard, but he loves them up even harder. And I think just the way he's come in so fast, I couldn't, I couldn't have done it at his age, having to coach the O-line this fast. Um, but he's done an outstanding job and just working his tail off. And, you know, he has a great understanding and just a great feel for just the whole staff and, and how he fits. And just been really, really pleased with him and his learning curve and how fast he's come. He'll be the next great O-line coach you'll see in the next four or five years.